Good morning, Lakeside class. How's everybody doing today? Hi, hey, Elmer. I know you have your daughter and is it granddaughter? Okay, cool. Glad to have you guys today. Any other visitors today? Well, Michaela's not a visitor. No, oh, man, she's been here a hundred times. Hey. Did they really? Did they have treats over there? Well, there they Who now? Oh, Andrew. Gary Green's grandson. Thank you for coming today. You know, Wayne, you know, the inflation's setting in. It's getting tough. Stuff you have to buy. I was thinking about, you know, the, the cell phone has such a status that you have a clip on the side of your belt. I couldn't afford that anymore, so I'm using my garage door opener now. <laughs> Gospel night is Thursday, May 19th. All right, they're going to also have a dessert deal at the end of it, which will be auctioned off for the youth, for the youth camp. So you guys, it's always in great desserts, and I know there's going to be one good pecan pie. It's worth 100 bucks. I guarantee you that. She always makes great pecan pie. May 21st, men's breakfast at the Cactus Flyer Ranch. And everybody know where Cactus Flyer Ranch is? It's out there in the woods. Got cows all around it. That's why they call it a ranch. And it smells like that, too, doesn't it, Omer? <laughs> but we're going to have men's breakfast out there. Always a great time. We're going to have Wayne Rogers is going to be speaking to us. He's a former race car driver and a race school owner. So he's going to have some videos of stuff. So if you guys go out there and we learn how to valet park. <laughs> also, the fifth Tuesday will be May 31st. We'll have a sign-up sheet next week. So you guys, always a lot of fun to do the fifth Tuesday. We have a lot of people to show up for that, and it's really a lot of fun to work that. Uh, today's birthday, Mike Murphy. Hey, he's 30 today. <laughs> yeah. Bob Curtis is on the 19th, and Cindy Verado is on the 20th. Anniversaries today, well, this week, will be Wes and Wanda Moore on the 15th. Treats today were Holleen Baker and Patsy Mitchell. Thank you. Yay. One more. Who? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't, how'd you sneak in on that deal? There you go. We appreciate it. I guarantee we'll eat anything. It didn't make any difference what it is. We'll eat it. Yeah, it is. Also today, we're going to have voting at, between services, which will start about 1040, so we'll have to get out a little early to do that. Our president is here, by the way. Patty, there you go. Great job. Thank you, Patty, for serving. Uh, and everybody else that serves on the board, we really appreciate your efforts and time to do that. It takes a lot of hours to, to, to do that. You know, a lot of times, how many in here are senior citizens? Pretty well covers me. Yeah, what's it take? <laughs> well, you know, most seniors have cell phones now. How many of her does not have a cell phone? He might not have it. Well, but he's got one. He just don't carry it with him, so it's good. So what I, what I was thinking today is that, you know, Lakeside class always get out good information for people can use in the future. So these are some senior texting codes that you might be able to use. ATD, at the doctor. BYOT, bring your own teeth. There you go, Wayne. LOL, living on Lipitor. And TOT, Texting on the toilet. <laughs> okay, how many have ever texted on the toilet? 
You know, the problem is it echoes in the room, so it's bad. So anyway. Rupert, you ready? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's for sale if you don't want it. <laughs> Time to T.O.T. My own. Good morning, church family. Can you hear me good? good morning. All right, all right. Not real good? Well, they could hear David good. Adjust it up here. Can you hear me now? No? All right. All right. Let me get it up here even closer now. Now can you hear me? There you go. Now I'm coming in strong. Well, good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. Good to see uh, so many smiling faces. I know we've got some empty chairs here, but you know how COVID is. It, it's, it's raised its ugly head up again and. So we have some um, some out. Uh, Robert is in. Robert is good, but Karen is down. So you you did the politically right thing to do because, you know, if she's out, well then, then do it, we would all start talking about why is Robert here with her being COVID. So you know how that goes. We we got to be politically correct these days. Yeah. But everything is uh, progressing on. How about those Mavericks? Yeah. Today's the seventh game, isn't it? And how about those Stars? Got any hockey fans? Yeah, yeah. Seventh game today, isn't it? Yeah. And, and the Rangers are just trying to win the seventh game. <laughs> Rangers. We're red. We're we got Ranger. Yeah, Ranger power. Yeah, they're coming around. They're coming around. Uh, this morning, we're, um, I have been told already now, I've already been told a number of times. I've been told by my wife. I've been told by the president of the board. I've been told by the Sunday school directors. And even, I've got to cut it short. Rupert, <laughs> don't get up there and make a fool of us and come dragging in at the last minute without a vote. Because we've got to uh, be dismissed here to get down because of people that are going to vote for the board members this morning at 1040 and I have uh, and I have to uh, yes Janet I'm going I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> I saw the look you the, hey guys you know the look you know uh -huh. hey kick it in gear let's go let's go this morning we're talking about a um, a church on the grow the new the first century church has has sprung up and it is growing, and the word is spreading like wildfire. And the Holy Spirit is working on the congregation. And my goodness, the, the Holy Spirit has come down, and it has indwelled the people. And this morning, the uh, apostles, and after the stoning of Stephen, the, the apostles and the deacons, everyone is, has got another mission. And they are spreading out farther and farther from Jerusalem. And Peter, old Simon Peter, he has gone over to uh, really Samaria. And you know, I was talking to you like, I guess it was last week, you know, it's like going from uh, Texas, from North Texas, you want, you, want to need, you need to get up to Kansas, but you can't go through Oklahoma because it's not politically correct for any law-abiding Jew here to go through the land of Samaria because they're just they're just outcast. So, but here we got it. Uh, Simon Peter is over in Joppa and uh, you remember that from last week, you, you know who, where, what he's doing over in Joppa? Where he's staying with? He is at the house of a Gentile and his name is Simon also. And Simon is a tanner. You know anything about the uh, a tanner business? It's where you, 
you have to cure out animal hides and, and you are making skins for different things. Now, that's unclean because you see any law abiding, respectful Jew don't ha doesn't have anything to do with unclean animals. And here Simon Peter is staying in the house with uh, Simon the Tanner. And he is on the mission field. And uh, can you imagine the smell of that place? Carl, what do you think it smells like around there? Bad. Bad. Larry, could you live in a Tanner's house? <laughs> Nick, how about you? Could you put up with that smell? I don't believe so. Maybe he's staying in the barn. Yep, yeah, maybe so. Maybe he's away from it. Yeah, could be. But Simon Peter, one of the pillars from the church, is up in Samaria with the Gentile, spreading the gospel. And over in the city of Cornelius, uh, Caesarea, there is a Roman centurion army soldier, and he's living up there in Caesarea. Now, Caesarea is really a port city like Joppa. But Caesarea is it's what the Roman world has moved as their main providence for Judea and that part of the country. That's where, that's where things are happening. That's where the growth is. That's where, the, that's where we put the baby boomers. So it's where things are moving up. It's progressive. And he is in Caesarea, but Peter's down in Joppa. And the story starts where he is, Peter is on the rooftop. It's about in the afternoon, and he is praying to the Lord in the afternoon. And they're cooking. It sounds like they, as I read it, I get the feeling that they're cooking dinner downstairs. And he's up on the rooftop, and he falls into a trance, and he has a vision given to him from the Lord. And as he sees that, as he's in that trance, he sees this great big sheet held up from four corners that this sheet is lower, being lowered down on the universe. And in that universe, and in that, that big sheet, white linen sheet, there's all kinds of animals. All kinds of animals. There's wild ones, there's birds, there's reptiles, there's lizards. There's all kinds, Wayne. And you know, he's in a trance, and he has that vision three times. Same vision, that big sheet being lowered down. What do you think that means? Somebody help me out here. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> it's starting to zoo, huh? You notice that? I mean, gosh, they got a, a pig there and a parrot and an owl and whatever, an armadillo crying to crawl out of the basket there, out of the sheep. And as he gets that, he doesn't understand that vision that he is having. And he's pondering himself, what, could, what does that mean? Meanwhile, an angel is up in Caesarea talking to this army soldier, the centurion. And the centurion is over about 100 men. And in Bible specifies, he is from a, an Italian regiment. He is from Rome itself. He's from Italy. And because of him being of a higher rank, I imagine that one day he's going to be able to take his rank and everything and go back to Italy and probably for retirement. And an angel of the Lord comes to him and he says, you need to send some of your men to go down to Joppa because there's a man down there by the name of Simon Peter and he's living at Simon the Tanner's house and he has a vision for you. 
kind of confusing, isn't it? Caesarea, Joppa, both of them connected here. And so the army soldier will send six of his men, excuse me, his main assistant, and some of his soldiers, and they will go to Joppa and to look for Simon Peter living in Simon the Tanner's house. Now he's there on the coast, and he's got a message for you. And you need to go get him and bring him here. Meanwhile, you need to get all your family and everything and prepare for the message. You remember, Simon Peter didn't even couldn't figure the, what the meaning of that was, of that sheet being lowered down. And so, when, as when that sheet is lowered down and Simon, Simon Peter sees that, all of a sudden he hears a voice telling him, kill and eat. Rise up, kill and eat. And Simon Peter says, Lord, I've never eaten anything that's not that's impure. I, I'm a I'm of the Jewish faith, and I don't I don't eat anything that is not pure, according to the law. And then the Lord will say, "Don't don't call something impure that I have made clean." When I make something clean, it's okay for you to eat and partake of it. And today, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Oh, me. Well, let's stop right there for a minute. What does that mean? Is this a lesson on what we can eat? If, if the Lord said that all that food was, was clean, is that what we're, this lesson is about? <coughs> kind of. Because this is the separation right here where the church begins to accept things that we can eat. If the Lord said it was okay to eat it, this is the, the stoppage of the early... Mosaic law from the Old Testament about what you can eat and what you can't eat. In other words, Bob, it's okay for you to have a shrimp salad for lunch and a bacon sandwich for dinner. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's okay. You can have some pork. You can have some shrimp. What? Totally unheard of, wasn't it? So that's running through Simon Peter's mind about the eating of it. Rise up, kill and eat. And he is seeing that. But do not call anything impure what I have made clean. About that time the soldiers come and they said it wouldn't be hard to find. The Bible, the Lord specified what? You had Simon the Tanner's house your name is Simon Peter. I want you to go get him. He'll be praying on the rooftop at 3 o'clock. I want you to get over there and bring him back. You know, I could even follow those instructions. <laughs> there he was, praying on the rooftop. He said, are you Simon Peter? Yes, yes. And the Lord even told Simon Peter, it's okay. Don't fear those men. You go with them. You go with them. So he packs up. They spend the night there at Simon the Tanner's house. The next morning they take off and they make the trip back to Caesarea. And everyone has come together and it's Peter that's in front of the, the group of people. And they said, Peter wants to know first, why, do you, why did you summon me to be here? And he had, and the soldier said, as quick to tell him, well, listen, an angel of the Lord came and he told me that, I'm need, that you have something to say to me. And then all, everything falls into place. And something that we take for granted as a daily, on a daily basis 
he, they find out that it is perfectly all right and it's acceptable to the Lord that in all this time we've been trying to spread the gospel to, to the Jews, that now the gospel is open to who? Everyone, to Gentiles. And he will be there and he will tell the people, yes, from the Jewish faith, but now the Holy Spirit has moved and it is, it's not for me to say who is pure or impure in a world today. And the Lord has told me to open the door to the Gentiles. I'm a Gentile. You're a Gentile. Aren't you glad that he did? And he opened the door so that we, so now, Thor, we are all present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee. And you know what? He opened the, he spread the word, and he opened the Bible, and he started telling them about the life of Christ. And he spread the good news, and he told them about the life of Christ, and he said that I was one of his followers. Can you see that? Don't you know that would be a, a tent revival meeting if we had Peter in here to tell us about how he now in the known world the gospel was open not just to Jews, but to everyone. And they were so glad to hear it because up to that time they would have to become Jewish to be part of of the of the faith. Now it's perfectly okay, and you are welcome to end to the faith and to join the 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 life of Christ, even though you're a Gentile. And you know what happened when he gave that? The Holy Spirit moved in and it indwelled those other people, those Gentiles, and they began speaking in tongues just like the Jews had at Pentecost. Well, that brings up another lesson. We'll talk about that another time. See how I kicked that can down the road there, Nick? <laughs> speaking, speaking in tongues. But we'll get to that another time. But speaking in tongues is a spiritual gift. Later on in Paul's ministry, he will tell them that that is one of the lesser gifts. And to be charismatic, you know, the word charismatic, you know what charismatic means? One with a spiritual gift. So you might have the gift of excitement. You might have the gift of exhortation, welcoming people in. You might have the gift of administration. You might have the gift of hospitality. You might have the, or any kind of spiritual gift. And all those gifts, the Lord has given at least one of, a, of them to us. And no matter what that gift is, we need to use that. And while you're using that gift, you know what will happen? It will open the door for another gift. And next thing you know, you've got several things working out there. Years ago, I didn't ever dreamed I would be a teacher. But I like to think I am today. Oh, man, you got your gift. The Lord gave you an outpouring, and you harvest the gifts that he gave you because there's more of a lot of them out there, and you develop that gift. Well, there was a great revival there, and everyone was joyful, and the centurion soldier will go back and start, start the faith growing inside his regiment and his country. And the door is open for Gentiles to come into the, into the faith, and it is a joyous time. They're having a big time, and the tanner, excuse me, the the centurion guard says, Peter, just stay here with us a few days. So he'll, they'll stay. He'll stay there and he'll minister to those people. And everything is, oh, they're so joyful. Can you see the, what, what um, 
the preaching this morning was talking about when the Lord comes into your heart. You remember that feeling that you had at first? Oh, you're so joyful, but then after a while you have to leave that joy and you go out into the real world and they don't recognize that as the same way that you do. Well, Peter has opened the door for the Gentiles, and but he went after after they lived it up for a few days. Peter has to go back to Jerusalem. Now, what kind of greeting is Peter going to have back in Jerusalem? All the Jews are there. The Sanhedrin is gathered. You can see them. They've got their coats on. They've got their robes. They've got the long tassels hanging down. Can you see how stately they are right now in your mind? They got a phylactery on their mind. They got a Bible verse in the, on their, on, written on their hands. They are holier than thou. And they're standing around, and, they are, and then here comes Peter into the group. And the Sanhedrin and the Jewish congregation got together, and they said, Now let me get this straight. You've been staying in a Gentile house with a tanner, helping him tan those hides, those unclean animals, and you're staying with Simon the, the Gentile. Is that right? Is that right? That's it. And <clears throat> let me ask you in all that time there, did you, surely you did, did you eat with them? Hey, Janet, did you eat with them? I did. <laughs> did you eat with them? Did you, did you happen to sleep there? Oh, no. And did you fellowship with them, too? And now we're hearing that you had that congregation, and you've invited them into the faith without them becoming Jewish? Oh, no. And then Peter will tell the whole story again about what had happened. And at the end, the Holy Spirit moved on that congregation and they could understand the way that Peter told them about how the Holy Spirit had indwelled those people. And so now you have the Jews welcoming the Gentiles. Good news. But I know that was a hard sell, and the, heart, and the hearts of those people had to be opened up and ready because we get all kinds of things in our minds, don't we? No matter who it is coming in. And we, as a group of people, need to remember that our doors are always open for everyone to come in to the congregation. Well, a great number believed and turned into the Lord, and everybody is, is pretty happy at this time. And then there's Uncle Barnabas, Uncle Barney again. He sent up to uh, check out and make sure everything is growing and going on the way it is. And when from there, he sees that the new church is beginning to spread. Now, Barnabas could have gone back to Jerusalem. Do you know what Barnabas did? He went up to all this time we've been waiting on, up in Tarsus now, all the time from the early Christians. He went back up to Tarsus to look for his buddy. You remember who he was? It was Saul, Saul of Tarsus. Remember he had... He was run out of Damascus, and they just told him, go to your hometown and stay there for a year. All that time has, has dwelt, and he's been out there preaching and learning, reading, getting ready to spread the word. And it's Barnabas that brings Saul of Tarsus 
back down to be in Caesarea, and Paul, excuse me, Saul at that time, will spend the next year ministering to those people in Caesarea. How about a new preacher? New preacher's on fire. He's preaching it up. He's been learning, studying. He knows all about the Jewish laws. Now he has the new covenant in his mind. And he is helping that early church grow. From this area, part of the country, this is where they take on a new name in the church body. You know what they call them? You know, up to that time, they've been calling them the way, the movement. But at this time, it's Paul that they changed their name, and you know what they're called now? Christians. This is the first place that you hear the word Christians. In Antioch. In Antioch which is up in uh, really Syria, I guess. And ministering to the people. Meanwhile, and I'll speak quickly, there is a prophet at that time, and he, his name is Abagus. Abagus. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> and he prophesies that there's a famine coming on the entire Roman world. The known Roman world is going to fall into a famine. And as the history, as we look, that famine will get there during the reign of Claudius, the king. Just as the Bible would forecast it. And when that famine comes, you know this early Gentile church that was so looked down upon and still people, you, you got even though back in Jerusalem, the, the Sanhedrin has given authority for the Gentiles to come in, but there's always somebody sitting back on the back row that, oh, you know, it's always going, I don't think they should have allowed those people in here. I'm not sure they can come in. I doubt if that was the right decision to make. You know, the, you know that. But the famine got so bad in Jerusalem that it is this church that is converted. These Gentiles are the ones that take the love offering back to Jerusalem. Look what we've got for you to show you. And it's because of that love offering, the church begins to even spread faster and faster. Saul is up here beginning his ministry. It's about time for Saul to get kick in the in the action. We're getting real close. We're going to start on Paul or Saul next week. Get we a little more time. A little more time. Y'all have questions, comments, observations? A growing way, a growing church. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Now you've got Jews and Gentiles. Jews and Gentiles in the same group. You've got bacon sandwiches and strictly kosher. You've got circumcised, uncircumcised. What could possibly go wrong? Well, we're going to be talking about that starting next week. And oh me, it's a rough ride. It's you can, it's a wonder we're here today. It really is to see. The Lord had to be strictly in it for it to have lasted the next 2,000 years. And here we are this morning. Praise the Lord. Questions, comments, observations? And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Father, thank you for this day. And Father, thank you for the opportunity just to come and open the Word and, and to be part of it. Father, thank you that, uh, that the Gentiles at, at this day and this lesson, that they were open the door and could come and go. Father, uh, we just come praising your name. Thank you for these early church forefathers. And, but Father, thank you for the loving and the saving grace 
of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father, who allowed a, a probable way and for us to be part. Father, look over us, take care of us, and we just ask you these things in your blessed name. Amen. Thank you, Rupert. <clears throat> Outstanding job. He got out here on time, too, today, didn't he? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. That's great. Okay, um, we have a few requests. Uh, Joy, I'm not Joy, she's out with some, still some effects of her COVID. Uh, Karen's not here because she has COVID. So you got third string. Uh, Betty says Lynn is doing well at her place she is right now, except she's complaining of the food, and, but she's enjoying her therapy, which I don't hear that very often. Um, Okay, Connie Newtonboom, um, let me get this. Uh, she's ha finally having her parathyroid surgery Wednesday the 18th at Clements University Hospital in Dallas. So she's waited a long time for that, so we wanna pray that that is very successful. Tim Sacre is having, finally having his back surgery this Thursday the 19th at Spine and Joint Outpatient. Uh, he's been through so much with that back and pain. I know he's been in a lot of pain recently, so we've really needed that to be successful for him. Let's pray that way. Um, okay, and then we have our new COVID list. Uh, Karen, Angie, Ronnie McManus so far uh, enjoy getting over it. So, uh, you know, none of them are real sick or anything, but um, we need for it not to spread through the choir anymore so we can have our um, concert on Tuesday night, Thursday night, because besides the fact we've worked real hard, this is the biggest fundraiser for the youth and they depend on this. And we really don't want it to be canceled. So we need to pray in that way. Um, and does anybody have anything else? Okay. Okay. Okay, David Shepherds, Betty's uh, neighbor, is having a very serious surgery Thursday. A lot of the pennies, penny. penny, yeah, we do, new pen do know Penny. Okay, thank you, Betty. Anybody else? Okay, Sharon? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, Sharon's mom is doing well. Uh, in her rehab and likes the food. Um, anybody else? Anybody? Okay, and this morning before I pray, we sang this song and it just really impacted me about this. We don't understand what's going on. There's so many things, disease and war and um, unrest and financial problems and everything in our country, but we sang this morning, my life, is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, and my strength is in you. And I think we just have to hang on to that. He knows what's going on. He's not surprised by any of this, and we just need to put our hope and faith in him. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you are in control. We don't understand it, but we know you do, and you have a plan. We just ask for these people who need your extra uh, care and uh, protection, and healing this week, and uh, the ones for surgery, and the people suffering from COVID, we pray you'll, um, it will stop, and we got, pray God that you will just uh, heal them, and uh, just heal our nation, God, we have so many problems, but again, we know you're in control, and we ask things in Christ's name, amen.